Well, are you ready to sing the great song of Advent, the song of the spirit of expectation, the great hymn that really sums up the season of Advent, all wrapped up in a chorus? Join with me. It's Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly. Yes, I'll explain why. Sing it with me. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. La 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. La 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 la. To the ancient tide carol. La 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 la. Beautiful job. It's an Advent carol. You may say, wait a minute, how does that fit as an Advent carol? It describes exactly what this season is all about. It's about donning now the gay apparel within our spirit, our heart, and our life, that sense of happiness and joy in great expectation. You see, this season down through the ages has been one that has been centered around the focus of a winter solstice. The days growing darker and darker, it's seeming to be shorter and shorter. And the ancients actually wondering in fear, would the sun ever come out again? I don't know about you, but there are some days when, you know, the sun is now setting. It used to be at 6 o'clock, then it was 6.15, then, you know, or, 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 or 5, 6, 5.45, and before you know it, it's 5, suddenly it's 5 o'clock, and you think, like, wait a minute, is the sun going to be setting at noon? And when will it rise? You know, I used to get up and... Five o'clock in the morning, look around six o'clock, have my coffee out on the patio by a fireplace. Now I'm waiting until seven or after seven for sunrise. You see how the ancients would have this sort of sense of apprehension. This is a season. Is the sun coming back? Is the light ever going to shine again? And so consequently, the ancients began to celebrate this season with all kinds of festivities and traditions, lighting of bonfires. Bonfires were a big tradition in ancient Europe as they celebrated the season of this advent or the season of a winter solstice, bringing light and warmth to the season. Quite often the tradition was that in that bonfire, there's something you didn't want to take with you to the next year, you threw it in the fire. Hence today we have the burning bowl service that we celebrate on the last Sunday of the year. Well, you write down those things that you want to submit and you turn it into, you drop it into the candle flame, into the fire, and poof, it disappears. So you see, the ancients were all about trying to say, how do we celebrate this moment of removing fear? How do we get back to the joy of knowing that the light is coming and we join in the fa la 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 la? How do we get this moment where we say that this is the season to be jolly, not the season to be afraid or fear or to be stressed? or to be full of worry. The Advent season then became celebrated within the context of the church around the 5th century. When the church said, let's bring this spirituality into full uh, uh, unfolding as we join with the winter solstice traditions of flame and fire, of joy and festivity, and we create this season of preparation as well, spiritual preparation. Now, the ancient times, beginning in the 5th century, the church would set aside this as a time of fasting. Very inappropriate for us in Western culture now. We just had Thanksgiving. Really hard to fast during that time. Really difficult. I know all of you have enjoyed the turkey, the pumpkin pie, or the sweet potato pie, or whatever it may be, and all the great festivities I did. Do you notice it's a little tighter around here? Uh, but we're, it's not the season to be fasting. See, the ancients said, let's do this time of preparation. Now, there are many ways that we can prepare. Advent, then, is a season of preparation. And how do we best prepare? But we embody expectation. That's right. Expectation helps us through this wonderful journey of coming to this place where we then understand this season is not one of fear and doubt and darkness but expectation of what is yet to come, what is unfolding in our lives, what is just around the corner, that that light is coming in nature. The sun will rise again in earlier times, that the days will begin to get longer. But more importantly in our spiritual life, the light of Christ, a consciousness within us, 
has been birthed, and it's birthed anew within us. So we find then that this is a time of expectation, which is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. And I love these terms or words that best describe expectation. Assumption, belief, presumption, prediction, forecast, assurance. They all echo exactly what the ancient truth of Scripture has been trying to unfold for us. Jeremiah 33 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show you great mighty things which thou knowest not. Call, not in doubt, not in fear, not in question. But call out with great expectation, expecting the Spirit of God to unfold for you wonderful truths. Expecting insight and wisdom to be yours. Expecting new light to shine on your pathway. Expecting the unfolding of the light of understanding and new truth to be unfolding for you within your life. Things that you may not have known or understood before, they're available to you as you're in the spirit of expectation in your encounter with God. When you go to God, when you go in prayer, when you're going to the centered space within you, when you're going within to that divine presence, are you going with this expectation then that says, I believe that something wonderful is going to be revealed to me, new truth. I reveal that to understand that the Holy Spirit's going to be speaking to me in wonderful ways. I, I expect this. And this is how my prayer life unfolds, filled with great expectation. So this expectation, this call, the expectation, is then to do this prayer life with a presumption or an assumption or assurance that great and mighty things are going to unfold for you. And the beautiful text you read today complements that from Psalm 103.5. I wait expectantly. So when I'm in this presence of God and I'm calling forth this divine presence within me, and welcoming this experience of its revelation within me, of its showing me new insights and truths, I wait, I pause, I am in this stillness, and there I am waiting with such great expectation, trusting God to unfold for me all the insights and goodness. You see, every day in our journey is a day of learning, of expanding, of growing spiritually. And it is this wonderful journey then that if you're not maturing, if you're not learning more, if you're not understanding more truth, if there's not a greater awakening in your life than there was last year at this time, it's time to begin your season of expectation and to begin by going to God and saying, I expect the revelations. I expect the unfolding of wisdom. I expect the new insights. I expect this holy Spirit to speak in me, through me, to be speaking around me and for me at all times. Let's not confuse expectation with hope because a lot of people kind of throw those two words in an, in an exchange. Oh, we're hoping, we're hoping, we're hoping, and we're expecting, but there's a big difference. For we find within the word hope a sense of uncertainty. I kind of hope. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm not really sure, I'm not really certain. There isn't that definite uh, aspect within our lives. And so we find that hope can be one of the most treacherous of human fantasies or fancies within our life. For hope has been defined as the poor man's bread, meaning that when you've got nothing else, well, you just turn to hope. But oh, there's something more. It's expectation that I live now in this sense of a belief, an assurance, a knowing that I expect God to unfold something within my life. I expect the Holy Spirit to do something amazing within me. I expect some sort of revelations to happen in my life. I expect to mature. I expect to grow. I expect to change. I expect to be different in my encounter with God day by day in each experience. Now, it's true it's better to have hope than to not have hope at all. But it becomes this poor substitute for that attitude uh, that really can be found when we are in expectation, true expectation of our lives. Because 
what it is is this wonderful power then that says, I expect so and I believe so. We have this time of the season that we look to the Christmas stories and the unfolding of the wonderful traditions of the birth of Jesus. Quite often we look at these Bible stories so historically, and what a shame to take them just in that context. To only read the story of the birth or the birth announcement of the angel coming to Mary and thinking, well, that happened thousands of years ago. What's it for me? We always look at Scripture and say, this is my story. And we always put ourselves in that story. We always find then the truth being unfolded for us that's timeless when we do just that. We find Mary, the young girl, young, and you know how it is when we're all young. We have all kinds of uncertainties within our lives, don't we? We're going through peer pressure or self-identity, a young person who is always going through those challenges. Some of us remember being young. Uh, some of us remember those early days when we were like as a kid, just saying, Oh, I don't know you know, who I am. I'm awkward. I'm trying to discover who I am and the unfolding of my personality and, and who I am as a young girl or a young man and all the struggles and challenges. And an angel. Angels are messengers of God. A messenger comes to say to Mary, this is the big thing you need to get. You need to understand. Mary, chill. That's right. I think the angel said that. Mary, chill. You are favored, highly favored. Blessed are you. We think, oh, that's a wonderful thing for Mary. Great for her, but what about me? But that's our story. And the message of God is trying to reveal to you the very same truth. I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is speaking something new to you even today, saying, blessed are you. You're highly favored. Blessed are you. The Spirit of God has found grace in you. I love how it starts the unfolding of the, the wonderful birth and ministry of Jesus, but it all begins with this awareness that first starts and foremost for us that we all must stop and acknowledge. Let's remove all fear and doubt and question and let this change how we approach God, not out of fear, not out of worry. Trust me, a lot of people say, Pastor, you don't want me to come to church because if I came to church, the ceiling would probably fall down on me. You know, uh, God would probably punish me. Lightning would strike. All these kind of crazy things because I haven't been in church for so long. I haven't been part of anything spiritual for so long. God would probably say, you know, pour, pour out wrath upon me. You see how we have this crazy concept? That the Spirit is saying to us, blessed are you. You are highly favored. Get ready to birth something within you. Get ready to birth something for something beautiful to be unfolding within you. We're learning then from this text and this wonderful story that we're not at odds with God, but we're found to be highly favored. We're not to be afraid or fear the divine unfolding something within us, but to expect that. Yes, to every day be expecting and to find yourself expecting. Or to say you find yourself, you're pregnant with God. That's right. I'm pregnant with God. I'm ready to deliver something divine. I am full of a wonderful spirit. It has been inhabiting within me, and I'm ready to give birth. For I expect that. This is the season of expectation. And when I go to prayer, I go with expectation. But the spirit is filling me impregnating my soul, ready to give birth to something amazing, ready to give birth to something powerful, ready to give birth to the light and love that is the divine. We're to listen to this messenger of God, not only given to Mary, but to give into our lives. And this is how we then birth amazing things within our world. This is how this season then has such power for us in our spiritual life. Because as we begin to expect to give birth, as we begin the season of preparation to give birth, as we begin this season with the story of Mary being our story, we then are, are ready to unfold something amazing in our spiritual lives in this journey that we live together. 
So we find here that Jesus also begins his ministry. If you look in the New Testament at his baptism experience, what unfolds for him? But a similar type of thing where the Holy Spirit falls upon me, him uh, in the shape of a dove. The spirit descends upon him and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Do you see this? That every time something great is about to be birthed, the spirit, the Holy Spirit is falling upon in bringing an awakening, awakening and awareness that God is pleased. We see the birth of the light of Christ consciousness unfolding in the world through Mary. We see the birth of the early church in the book of Acts as the Holy Spirit began to work through them and they began to move out in holy boldness. They began to move as the Spirit worked in and through and they birthed something amazing. We find within Jesus this suddenly this awakening that he realizes, I am beloved. I am the beloved. I am the Son of God. We're called to do the same. And if we haven't had that experience, then this is the season for us to do so. That engages then a fearless expectation. Whether we, we're not fearing God, we're fearing the divine working within us. We're not afraid what's going to unfold within us because we're not afraid of it at all. We're expecting something to happen within us. There's, so there's no reservation. There's no uh, holding back. There's just, I'm fully available. Spirit of God, work in me, through me. And suddenly there rises within us a fearless expectation. When Jesus fed the 5,000, Interestingly enough, he instructed them, he invited them. The word says he bade them, insisted, you might say, everyone sit down, you're going to be fed. Well, wait a minute. Jesus speaks this to the 5,000, and you can imagine the disciples around going, well, Jesus, don't sit, tell them to sit down. You should be telling them, go to the store and get some food because we don't have any. All we have is some loaves and fishes. Yet Jesus instructs them, begin to sit down in groups. Get ready to be served. Wow. Interesting note in that story as Jesus sets the expectation within the very body except in, and sort of sets the expectation in mind and consciousness of each and every one. Oh, sit down. We're going to get ready to be fed. Oh. Let's come to the table, shall we say. Let's all, uh, you know, the dinner bell's being rung. Let's all get ready because there was great expectation that was created within those knowing that somehow we're going to be fed. It's interesting that Jesus didn't then speak words of, I hope this works. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Uh, he wasn't this sort of uh, expressing this sense of hope. He broke the bread. He blessed it. He gave and shared with the expectation. And that power of expectation that says, I know, I call upon the Lord and with great expectation, I trust and I wait and I know great things are going to unfold. The Jeremiah text, the psalmist all woven together in this beautiful story revealed to us in an example of the feeding of the 5,000. You see, expectation does something. It, it creates a neutral path in the brain that is clear of want, a worry and doubt and says, wait a minute, I'm expecting, so I'm going to act as if, act as if. You know, I've shared with many of you in our classes that, you know, for years, I, uh, when we bought in the, uh, our house, Robert and I, we looked out and we wanted a sidewalk from our front door going out to the street. We had a huge yard, big front door. No way for people to get to that front door because the little sidewalk that ran along the front of the house was kind of hidden. So every day I began to pray and believe I'm going to have a sidewalk. Well, we didn't have the funds for the sidewalk. Where are we going to get this funds for the sidewalk? How is that going to happen for us? But in this spirit of fearless expectation, I began to walk the dog up and down the sidewalk. And Robert says, what are you doing? I said, I'm walking the dog. I, what, what, you're walking the dog? Where? where I'm walking the dog on the sidewalk. What sidewalk? We don't have a sidewalk. Yes, we do. Because the expectation is, it's going to be there. I'm living fearless expectation by acting as if. Jesus breaks the bread, acting as if. Jesus is instructing people to sit down in groups, acting as if. Jesus is 
blessing and acting as if in all aspects there is a fearless expectation that says, I expect all things to work together for good. Now, could you imagine what that's like? Oh, I can, because as I began to visualize, as I began to act as if, as I began to draw the sketches of what the sidewalk and the hedges and the flowers are going to all look like, well, lo and behold, a miracle happened, and finances came in alignment, and the man who was doing our lawn and putting our sprinkler system said, well, I'll throw in a sidewalk for you. Wow. Okay. And I said, can you make it look like this? And I put out the picture. He said, yes. He said, that's exactly what I imagined. That's exactly what it is. And today I have that which I expected. You see, the miracles happen for us. And when we live and dwell in this season of expectation, something changes and transpires within our lives. It changes us that suddenly we begin to see things so differently. We begin to see things we didn't know. And that, again, that Jeremiah text that says, there's an unfolding of wisdom of things that you did not even know. You know, it's through the eye of expectation that you can see clearly. You can see things that maybe were not seen before. It's like the mariner who sees objects at sea long before those on land can see them. The one who looks out through the telescope and sees far off into the distance, far than those with the normal eye who cannot see clearly or see things unfolding for them. The Bible teaches this very truth, as it says in this passage. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. The people were saying, well, what are you talking about? The night is far spent, meaning we're still in the night. All we can see is the darkness, and all we know is the darkness. And Jesus is teaching and saying, it's getting lighter and lighter. The dawn is at hand. Get ready. The day is at hand. The sunrise is at hand. Begin to live out expectation, and you will see your world totally different. I love the French doctor Huey who offered this wonderful saying, day by day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Say it with me. Day by day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. It was this wonderful affirmation. It was this wonderful thing of, that was expressed of self-expression of expectation. Day by day, in every way, not just in a few, but in every way, I am getting better and better. And that became that sort of sense of expectation that rose within those whom he counseled and worked with. And as a doctor, he saw people heal. He saw people finding transitions and changes in their lives. He found people experiencing health and wholeness. He found people moving to their highest and best. How? Because they lived out the spirit of expectation fearlessly. To say day by day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. So this is the season of Advent. It is the season to be expecting. Expecting the sun to rise. Expecting the days to, to become longer. Expecting this, that uh, the warmth will return and new seasons unfold for our lives. And so within our spiritual life. This is the time to go within with expectation and say, I am expecting new light, new revelation, new truth, new understanding to be mine. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Tis the season to celebrate and with great expectation the joy that's found as new light comes into our hearts and our lives. I invite you to celebrate Advent every day during this month. Celebrate it with the Spirit of God saying, I am expecting great things every day in every way. I'm getting better and better. I expect it. Amen.